This is an overview demo of vRealize Log Insight Cloud Log Management functions. For configuring log forwarding, we're going to do a new configuration. And I want to configure my NSXT firewall logs to go to my on-prem environment. So notice there's an on-prem and a cloud endpoint, but this one's going to be on-prem. If I'm sending logs to my on-prem environment, I do need to use a cloud proxy. And this cloud proxy is located in the data center that I'm sending logs to. I'll choose the endpoint type as log insight. Um, the only other option right now is Splunk. And then we also can use generic UDP and TCP endpoints if you want to do syslog. Mm -hmm. I'll add the URL for my proxy ingestion point. For Splunk from cloud to cloud, you'll typically have some sort of API key or token that you would add in this headers area. And then you can add a tag. Usually I like to add a tag just so I know on-prem what it's getting. So this is just saying that these NSXT logs are from our TMM instance in DMC. And then I want to add a filter. I'm going to filter by log type. Again, that's a good, good field to know. And then we'll just leave it as contains. And I want it to contain NSXT firewalls log type. I could also do a filter by app name. Like if I wanted to do all NSX, that might be a filter that I'd use if I didn't just specifically want firewall logs. But I just do the search and I'm validating, yes, these are my um, firewall logs, and I'll click on verify, and then save that. I'll do some validation at the end of this demo so we can see it in action, but right now I'm just doing configuration. For log archival, do another new configuration. I want to archive my AWS logs, and I can retain those just for three months. So again, we'll add a filter, we'll do log type again, and then just doing AWS. We validate the filter and then click on save. That's going to archive my logs to an S3 bucket. So if somebody tries to come in here and configure that and they don't have a bucket for archival, it's going to give them an error message that they're not configured on the back end. So they'll have to do that before they use this feature. Log processing rules will do variable retention. This is for keeping logs for a shorter number of days. Archival is for keeping logs for a longer period of time. And we just want to keep these logs for 10 days. Add the filter again. Log type, do the GCP. Validation steps and save that. And then for tagging logs, we're just using the same example. We have VCF logs that I want to tag as VCF so I know where they're coming from. Add a filter. We're going to do it by host name because this uh, log type doesn't exist for VCF right now. It's not currently populated. And then all of my VCF host names are named with the prefix of VCF. Search and save that. So those logs will come in with that tag. Filtering logs. I want to filter some core DNS logs because they're just too prevalent in the environment. I want to apply this to, or I'm going to create a query. So I'm looking for the quadruple A there. I can view this. I'm going to expand the log message to get a little more detail because there might be a case where four A's will come through for whatever reason in a different log message. So I don't just want to base it on a text filter, then I can copy this event type. And this is grouping all of those similar DNS logs together. So this gives me a little bit more of a safety net versus just doing a text filter. So I'm going to add the filter of event type. We'll do that. Now that I've added this, I can go ahead and delete the that and I don't want to apply or and I want to apply that. So I'll do a search. And so that will start dropping those logs. Again, we'll do validation in a moment here. And then lastly, we'll do the masking. We want to make sure we're stripping out any personal information. So we have a phone number coming through in a log message. We just want it to be text. It's not a specific field that will have that. I'm going to copy the regular expression for a phone number. 
And then the value that we want to replace is just going to be asterisk. And I want to apply this to all logs, not specific logs. And then um, because I'm applying it to all logs, if there's no search filter, right? It's just going to do a pattern match. And I'll save that. And now I want to pop into the validation. We tagged specific logs that with VMC ID, so those NSXT logs that we had, we added this new tag, so we just need the value to exist. Now I see the value here, and it's showing up that the tag I added. Now, if we come back into Log Insight Cloud, do another filter. We want to filter by the event type that we created. So that's the event type that we had for our DNS logs. And voila, I don't have any events, but you might not believe that I was ever getting events. So if we expand that time frame out to six hours, once I enable that, you can see sometime after 1230, I'm no longer ingesting those events. And then let's do the last validation. Uh, we did masking a phone number. This one's actually a log message that's coming through and it's telling me that somebody updated their phone number, but it's also including what they updated it to. So I don't want that in the log message. And by applying that filter, I've successfully removed it. And this completes the overview demo of all of the log management features.